This is just amazing. Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And what's up, guys? It is gloomy out here. It is raining. It is later in the afternoon. We're pretty much in Florida. It's for you guys who don't live around here. It pretty much in the summer rains every day. But it only rains for like an hour or two. And usually it starts anywhere in the afternoon sometime, right? Uh, today it started around 4. So I was filming all day uh, for my bodybuilding channel. And then I did a little bit of uh, reptile filming. I didn't really get as much as I wanted done. But... Hey, we looked at some clutches that uh, shed out that were in the incubator still. And we'll be moving them to their permanent homes now. And some of them look pretty spectacular. So this is not a long video, but we're going to go take a look and see uh, what's going on in the snake room. Today was feeding day, actually. So we were feeding as well and cleaning. I like to feed and clean at the same time, especially the big snakes. And uh, I... <laughs> I have so many snakes now that I, I, I underestimate how much I should defrost every single week. So now I gotta defrost more and feed more tomorrow, but that's the way it goes. I've been kind of feeding on an every other week schedule, except for like my super important holdbacks. So just get a little, maybe a little extra meal here and there. You hear that thunder in the back there? That's real. Uh, I just came, it just let up actually, but it's still thundering. So we're gonna try to get this little intro and outro done and then uh, we can see what's going on inside that snake room. Let's see what Pablo's up to now and uh, check it out. All right, little update on the clutch that just shed out. I showed you this last week. This was my OD Orange Dream Ultramel Pied. It's Head Hypo. It was bred to an Enchi Orange Dream Head Pied Pass Head Hypo. Doesn't look like we hit any visual hypos here, but we definitely got some, some cool snakes. Look at this guy. Look how beautiful this pie came out. This has got to be like a super orange dream, Enchi, pie. Everything's going to be head ultramel, which is kind of cool. That's really, I think, the coolest part of the whole thing. So, really nice. These all look super in, and these all, this probably is OD um, Enchi. This one is, this is the only non pied in the whole clutch. And this looks super OD Enchi. Head pied, head ultramel. Pos head, everything's pos head hypo, I guess, yeah. 66%. And then, Actually, I guess it would be 50% because we don't know if the, we don't know if the mother was head hypo. She was only 50%. The father was head hypo, 100%. So at least 50% everything is head hypo. So th these are still some great babies. This is probably Super Orange Dream too. This is really nice. Th these are going to be hard to let go because they're really, really clean. This one is really, really nice. Why is that one so much brighter? There can only be one copy of Enchi. So uh, I think that this might be Super Orange Dream Enchi Pied because it's very low white. This is, pro this is probably Orange Dream Enchi Pied, one copy. And then this is, I think, Super Orange Dream, maybe no Enchi Pied. So that's what I think we got here. This is really nice. This, this is my favorite one. Although this one probably has more genetic potential there. Well, not really. I'd rather have the Super Orange Dream pie. And they're all, once again, head ultramel and fifty, at least 50% head hypo. So, good clutch. All right, I showed you this last week, and you just shut out. So, I had to show you this. This is one of the craziest, I think, pies I've produced, and maybe of all time. This is banana and she... Orange Dream, I'm pretty sure it's Yellow Belly also. Fire Pied, I think. It's crazy, right? Look at this thing. What a nut. Just shed. I mean, the shed, after it shed, it looks even crazier than before it shed. This is just amazing. All right, one more quick peek into the incubator. These guys shed out as well. These are super micro scales and super micro scales are scaleless animals they're all everything here is heck clown 
And so if you guys want to get into the Microscale project and, or, and the Microscale Clown project, I should say, which is pretty hot, everyone's, I can't wait to produce a Super Microscale Clown. Uh, this is the way to do it. Obviously, I'm not going to keep all these babies, so let me know if you guys want to grab any of these. We got, not only do we get a lot of supers, we got just regular micro scales too, that are, and everything's head clown here. So this is, this, um, look at that, look how many scales that thing's missing, with the teeny little mini scales. So we have a lot of really nice babies. These are gonna be going up, because I have a bunch of these already. I'm gonna probably hold back maybe one or two of these. Everything else is gonna be for sale. These are so smooth, they're so nice. Oh, I love these. I. I would keep everything, all the scales now, but I just love them. And like I said, these are all heck clown. How can you go wrong with that? I should just grow them all up, keep all the females. But, beautiful. All right, there's my Stonewash Bradley python. And she potentially might uh, give us a clutch egg. She doesn't look that big to me. There's that, my Hypo Bradley male. I still have him in there with her. They're spring breeders, but everyone's been reporting that they've been having clutches from their from their Bradleys. My the problem is my Bradley hasn't been sitting on the on the on the hot spot. I really didn't see any locks. Not that that means a hell of a lot, but she is darker than normal, which can sometimes mean they're gonna you know lay a clutch. But I don't know. I'm just not that confident in the fact that uh, that she's gonna go. She was a lot bigger last year when she went. And those, some of those eggs went to term and they just, the babies were dead. I don't know why. So we repeated the pairing. We'll have to see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. There's my King Cobra, I mean uh, my olive python, my albino olive python, who once again, for the sixth year in a row, produced nothing, no eggs. This coming year, she will be going outside. I'm building her an outdoor enclosure. And that's where she's, you know what? I just don't think I'm getting them cold enough. That's the problem I'm here without getting bit. I just don't think she's getting cold enough and that's the problem. I mean, she's very healthy. She's got a great body mass size. I don't overfeed her. I do everything you're supposed to do, except probably just don't get her cold enough. But here she comes, she's gonna try to eat me now. I actually love this snake. I do, I really want her to reproduce so I can have some babies. Papa's gonna wanna have some albino olive pythons, I know that. <laughs> I know that everyone, I, I get emails at least once a week asking me when I'm producing albino uh, olive pythons. You know what my same answer is? I don't know. Look, she's going down there, she's like trying to get to the floor, she's gonna go right there and she's gonna bite me in the leg. <laughs> she's really not that bad. But I did get, I, I have gotten a couple nice bites from her. Depends what kind of mood she's in. She probably smells rats, which is probably not a good idea to be filming her now, but that's just the way it goes. All right, final video of the day. It was quickie because we were feeding today and I was recording for RX Muscle, my bodybuilding channel, a lot. Here's our pair of green tree pythons. These are Aru locality. And they get some, they get some nice blues in them, nice amounts of blue. I really like, I love the blue. Look at, look at the yellow head. We can only get these things maybe to breed in the future. I've only had them for a little while, so I picked them up recently probably saw the video where I did. So I've been just kind of cohabitating them, getting to learn green tree pythons. This is, these, these are my, uh, my learning snakes, I call them. I'm not buying anything too high end until I know what I'm doing because that's a recipe for disaster. But anyway, beautiful female there, beautiful male with a lot of blues in them. Absolutely gorgeous. I do love these snakes. They, they, I mean, how could you not like the way these things look? Green snake? blue and yellow in it oh my god but we'll keep i'll keep you updated as i'm uh, as i'm learning all right guys that's going to do it for today at palumbo's pythons and boas um we're gonna wrap up i want to just uh, give you a little spiel a little bit of my um burmese python uh insights they found a uh, 18 foot a lot of people have been sending me this story about the 18 foot burmese python they found I think she was on a clutch of eggs in the Everglades, or actually it was in Naples, I think. And people ask me, what do I think about it? And you know, look, there's, we know that the Burmese pythons are invasive here in Florida. They're out, they're breeding, 
they're not decimating the environment here. If any of you guys have big snakes, you know they eat like they eat a big meal. They eat once a month. They don't they don't eat like every single day. That's not how snakes do it, especially big snakes. So they're not they're not decimating the the environment. And you know what? People here love to hunt. Since I moved to Florida, I've never seen a bunch of people. That, it's like Texas. They love to do their hunting. In Texas, they have wild boar, you know, that w wander all over. And I've gone boar hunting with a lot of Texas guys that I'm friends with. Uh, some of them hunt them with dogs, the old-fashioned way. Some hunt with guns. Same thing here. And, and except in Florida, they get, they hunt Burmese pythons. So the hunters loved and they loved and need stuff to to be able to hunt. They actually pay for these people to bring in these Burmese pythons. So what's better than a hunter who actually is getting paid for what he's hunting? It's amazing. So I have no problem with them killing uh, the overpopulation of Burmese pythons. I'm a snake lover. I personally would never want to kill a snake that I found in the wild. That's just me. But I have no problem with other people, you know, killing invasive snakes uh, for that matter. But, you know, it is a little overblown in terms of, you know, the dangers of what's going on. None of these snakes are coming into anyone's house and eating their kids, all right? That's not gonna happen. So, you know, they like to blow these things out of proportion. And that's why these silly laws sometimes get made because people react to something that's really not the truth of the matter, you know? I say, let the hunters just enjoy themselves and do what they gotta do in the Everglades, wherever these Burmese pythons are. And for now, you know, the domestic captive breeding that we do as reptile breeders has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Very few people I don't think are taking in, you know, wild Burmese pythons and, and, and hold, keeping them as pets. You know, most people who had Burmese pythons when they were legal here, you know, they, they got them from breeders. They were high-end morphs people were keeping. Uh, so I'm not that concerned about it. I think what we're doing as breeders here in Florida is conservation. We're also providing a business and, uh, you know, opportunity for ourselves. And we're also providing a service. We captively breed reptiles, okay? Snakes, lizards. That means we don't have to take any more out of the wild. We don't have to decimate the wild population. And the wild population is getting decimated by housing and businesses coming into places. So it's the perfect conservation solution. Let breeders breed, sell the, the bred snakes, the captive bred snakes and the wild snakes. If they're out of control, then we have to control them. You know, let the hunters hunt those guys. Anyway, we can debate this probably full from today till doomsday, and we'll never have uh, a solid consensus from everyone because everyone has their own opinions. And that's what's great about this world. We all can make our own opinions and have our own. But at the same time, banning things never works. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying all these videos. If you are, give us a like, click that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.